Welcome to Bible at Home, a devotional and educational offering of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church of Bismarck, North Dakota. This week following November 14th, we look at the God Calls Isaiah from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. And uh, as we get to this uh, text today, we are approaching the end of our uh, kind of our church year, uh, coming up with uh, Christ the King Sunday, uh, which uh, means that we are getting close to Advent. And so the stories start to take on a different meaning. This preparation is happening a little quicker. And so uh, maybe kind of keep in mind, uh, where have you seen God preparing you uh, recently, especially as the holidays are approaching. I mean, it's kind of interesting with the supply chain uh, dilemma that people are talking about. Uh, make sure you buy your Christmas gifts right now. If you see it, buy it. And part of me wonders how much that is panic and how much is consumerism and how much might be be wise. It's uh, a little bit of both. Maybe it's a good year to think of uh, some different things to do for uh for Christmas gift giving, but uh, just just some thoughts there, okay? <laughs> so as we prepare to look at this, uh, this portion of the prophet Isaiah, uh, we want to keep in mind what is God doing in this story and what part do humans play in God's plan? What in the story surprises or unsettles you? What gives you comfort? And what questions do you have about this reading? So let's look at this reading from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voice of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. This uh, has for us an image of the temple, the image of being in God's presence. And Isaiah does in his uh, in his book have uh, several of these visions. Now uh, clues to look for. In the year that King Uzziah died, so we know he was king, um, it is thought that Isaiah, um, King Uzziah was a king of the northern kingdom of Israel, I believe, and um, we this is about um they're thinking around 700 740 so um this is kind of coming at that time when syria is really starting to try to influence what's going on in the northern kingdom in israel and there is a conflict with judah with the southern kingdom so the assyrians are really trying to uh, create a lot of havoc here. So this this image of the temple, um, you know, the temple is down in Jerusalem. So um, there, this idea of, remember back with David, that, you know, the temple, you worship God in Jerusalem. So even if um, he is a king or he's a prophet for the southern kingdom, I mean, keep in mind, this is talking about the temple. The seraphs are one of the types of angels, heavenly creatures. Um, the seraphs, if I again remember correctly, um, are kind of a snake-like, and so this idea of, of of also, and then that they and and this idea of being covered, of not showing too much in God's presence. Um, the idea of the six wings and how they they didn't even want to look upon uh, God's face and they wanted to cover up their their uh, their feet probably you know the ugliest part we have as as human beings and with two they can fly so God gives them six wings to 
and uh, two of them actually get to fly. And they are saying, holy, holy, holy. Anytime you repeat a word, especially three times, means that this is like perfection. This is the, this is the thing. So they're talking about God, the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is full of his glory. God is present with his people. And the, the, the hinges, the pivots on the door, the hinges on the doors shake at their voice. And the house is filled with smoke. And it was that smoke uh, not only would purify, it would come from a fire, but you know, incense, think of smoke, um, is used to purify, but it um, also would be used to obscure looking directly at God. So um, if you are that close in God's presence, you want it to be a little bit smoky because God is perfection. We are not perfect. And it's kind of like the old Star Trek matter and antimatter. They don't mix very well. So, and I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the God, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched, his mouth, touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your mouth, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for me? And I said, Here I am, send me. So the second half of our reading is Isaiah's response, and he confesses, I am a man of unclean lips. Um, and you know, and he's now, he, in this case, he's speaking for the people, and the people of unclean lips but he's amazed that he yet he has seen with his own eyes the king you know god the lord of hosts remember back in um when they first entered the promised land the time of the judges god was supposed to be their king not an earthly king but this this overarching heavenly king and this live coal that is taken from the altar the altar where the sacrifices are made this is so this would be a holy fire um, and fire was thought to purify you know thinking of melting metals to drive out the impurities and such and this this coal is used to touch his very lips so if something holy touches you it makes you holy and so i if nothing else isaiah's sin and guilt has been blotted out and now that he is prepared, God can ask the question, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Who will go and be my prophet? Who will go and deliver this message? And we have Isaiah res responding, here am I, send me. And uh, this in a way, if we kind of think about it, you know, what's God doing in this? He's sending his prophet. Um, the people are really, really messing up. So <laughs> they need a prophet. They need, they need somebody to come and tell them what God expects, to, expects of them. Now there's not much other than Isaiah, the human, who, the human going on here, but uh, the human beings are implied in the background that, they are being, um, God is trying to rescue them, save them. Um, you know, the thing that kind of I, I gives me comfort maybe and also kind of unsettles me is here we have the words again, almost the same words that Samuel said when God called him. You know, and what did Eli say to Samuel? When you hear God call, say, here I am. So this theme of here I am, send me. Uh, here I am, God. So when we get to Luke's gospel, we need to kind of keep remembering that. Uh, how does uh, how does Luke's story play out that theme of here I am, send me? So uh, God is always trying to uh, save his people. I think that would give me comfort, if nothing else. But uh, these visions, um, prophets and old men had visions. 
they had enough life experience it's, or something like that that they could have these visions and see um, God's plans. So um, Isaiah, a very um, big, one of the big prophets, prophet books, uh, he is the most quoted probably in just about the most quoted in the New Testament. So as, uh, again, as we get into the gospel, um, as we approach Christmas and after Christmas, how is that, um, how is Isaiah used? How is Isaiah's example used to help? So let us pray. King of heaven and earth, as you cleansed Isaiah with a coal of fire to prepare him for proclaiming your word to the world, prepare us so that we may know your bidding and carry out your calling with eagerness and urgency. Show the world greatness that cannot be contained any more than smoke or fire can be caught. In the name of the one who sacrificed everything to carry out your commands, Jesus Christ, our sanctifier. Amen. And our blessing today is God makes you holy. Much like that uh, fire, those coals there, touches our lips. And kind of one thing to kind of keep in mind, um, this idea of balance, the balance in our life, um, as we've dealt with, uh, with the drought and so much uh, forest fires, that often you hear that part of the problem is that we don't there aren't enough fires when um, there's too much growth that the thing that causes these fires is that there's so much undergrowth and and uh, dead uh, vegetation that it feeds the fire that if there was uh, a way to clean those out or to uh, have smaller fires that would clean out that vegetation it would help to uh, reduce the uh, the wildfires and many of you hear stories of many of the uh, breeds breeds um, types of trees that they actually need their their seeds need to be exposed to fire for them to germinate so this idea of sometimes fire is not just always destructive but it also helps to purify as we saw and helps new life and new growth happen so I hope you have a great week and uh, look forward to continue to tell these stories to you as we approach the uh, new year of Luke, the gospel. Have a great week.